how long do you think it should take to turn an illustration like this to an animation like this? Take a guess. What if I tell you that it takes less than two minutes in Adobe Fresco to convert this to this? Quite surprised. So was I and which is where I've been gradually making a shift from Procreate which has been my illustration app of choice to Fresco. And while I've made a separate video addressing my three reasons why I'm moving from Procreate to Fresco, in this video, I'm going to talk about five micro animation features which make Adobe Fresco amazing for creating artworks like these. My name is Shubham Kurana and as a bunch of you know, I'm the creator of Corporate Comics, which is a webcomic page on Instagram with over 210k followers. Uh, my comics have also been recently published into a book called Monday to Friday. So if you haven't, would love for you to check it out. I've also worked with a bunch of uh, brands and done various brand collaborations. In this video, I'm specifically going to talk about micro animations. Now, what are micro animations? Micro animations are very, very small, basic animations. Think, let's say, zoom and small movements, eye rolls, all of those basic effects which help you convert a relatively static illustration or an art into a video. Now, why micro animations? With, of course, reels going really, really popular. You cannot just put a static image out there. Uh, Instagram's pushing reels as a format to pretty much all the new uh, users and non-followers. And hence, if you want to reach new audience, if you want to grow on the platform, there is no other option but to make reels. Why micro animations are different from animations is because you do not need to be a seasoned animator to be able to work on these and make these. And hence, Fresco is proving out to be an amazing tool for some of these micro animations. So I'm going to talk about five micro animation tools which are available on Adobe Fresco. And while I do that, I'm going to convert that illustration I showed you to the animation I showed you as well. So let's get started. So here's the illustration. I've opened it here on Adobe Fresco. As you can see, I've created this copper art, which is my character as an astronaut in space. And I've done it, of course, through multiple layers. All these layers are here. And I've combined them into a group, which is the astronaut. Then I've also created this interesting blob, which is this red thing in space. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create the background just to give it a very space-like feel. I'm going to fill very dark bluish color. What I'm also going to do is just to sort of give this light leak feel. I'm going to select, let's say, a very bright green color. And I'm also going to, on top of it, use this watercolor brush to have this light leak sort of coming from the side. I'm going to use one of the smudge tools to make it spread out here. I'm going to change the format to a soft light just so that it blends in nicely. So now we have pretty much the entire artwork. Now, the first feature which I'm actually going to talk about is the path animation tool. If I were to make this red blob move, I can actually create it frame by frame and have it sort of in different positions and then that's how it'll move. But what I can very simply do is I can click on this path option. And the moment I do that, I actually have the option of making a path along which this should move. I'm going to make a very small path and the moment I do that, you can see the blob floating, right? I'm going to also really slow it down because obviously it's space. So if I increase the number of frames this is happening in, it's obviously going to move really slowly like it is in space. The second thing which I really love about Fresco is just to make it a little more realistic. I have the option of actually making it grow inside and again shrink back in size while this animation is happening. So if you see there's this option which is grow and shrink. I'm going to select this. I'm going to select how much I want it to grow. So I don't want it to grow too much, but say 15%. And as you see, now when the ball is coming ahead, it's growing big and it's again going back to its small size. So it's making it a lot more realistic, giving it a lot more dimension. The third tool, which I love about it, is the fact that you can apply all of these animations to different layers differently. As you saw, I applied it to only the blob, but the image in the background, which is the copper art in space, is actually static. The other amazing thing, and which is a feature which I love all the more, is that I can actually apply it to a group as well. So I've selected now the group. Instead of me having to make this single layer by merging them, 
Uh, it's actually, as you can see, a group of uh, my base drawing layer and then the coloring layer and the shadow and the highlights and whatnot. I can actually just select path and I, I can apply this path effect to this group as well. Now again, this is also moving too far. So I'm going to maybe slow it down a little and make it like a similar kind of a speed. So I'm going to make the frames 120. And now when I play both of these together, you can actually see that they both have their separate animations and they have their separate paths. As you saw in the animation which I showed you, it had a lot of stars. I just create a new layer. I'm gonna select any brush, plain white color, and I'm gonna make a few stars. And I'm gonna spread them out. Now, you think that just to make it look like space, I need to make many, many, many of these stars, right? Wrong, because that's the beauty of Fresco. What I can do is not only can I define the path and make them grow and shrink, I can actually just go to the path tool and I have the option of add multiples. So I can increase the number of stars as you can see here and I can scatter them. Just four or five stars are now multiples of what nine as you can see. I'm going to reduce the percentage because that way the whole layer will be shrinking and growing. So it's, it's sort of giving that very space like moving feeling. I'm then going to add some of these almost like it's moving in space. It's obviously too fast, so I'm going to reduce the speed. I'm going to increase the number of frames here again as well. So it, it goes very, very, very slowly. Um, and I'm also going to randomize it. So it doesn't look like uh, they are like multiple iterations of the same. It's going to make it look even more realistic. I also have the options of making it sway so let me show you this effect in the red blob instead of making it sway i'm actually going to make it spin while it flies as you can see the ball is now rotating in its own axis so as you see literally in like a few clicks i am able to create this effect i'm going to just add another effect which is this green light leak again to make it look like space i'm going to increase and decrease this in size in its own position. I'm going to make it like sort of look like it's shrinking and growing in its place as well. And that's it. That's all you had to do. This is how the final animation looks. And you can just go ahead and export this. And in literally a few minutes, you were able to convert something which is as basic an illustration to an animation which looks far more elaborate. And again, now the possibilities are endless. My purpose was to just show you these five tools, which is one, paths, two, grow and shrink, three, the ability to move different layers differently and animate them separately, then four, being able to apply an animation effect to an entire group, and lastly, the multiply and scatter, which you can also therefore randomize and make it all look a lot more realistic. So. Hope you like this video. I intend to talk a lot more about uh, my process, uh, my art, uh, various ways of creating micro animations, how I make money as an illustrator on Instagram. So if you found this video useful, uh, would love for you to like it. Would love for you to comment with what more you'd want to see. If you're interested in this topic and if you're interested in in general figuring out about being an Instagram creator, would love for you to subscribe.